Warning. The Not Real Art Podcast is intended for creative audiences only. The Not Real Art Podcast celebrates creativity and creative culture worldwide. It contains material that is fresh, fun and inspiring and is not suitable for boring old art snobs. Now, let's get started and enjoy the show. Greetings and salutations, my fellow creators. Welcome to Not Real Art, the podcast that celebrates creativity and creative culture worldwide. I'm your host, Sourdough. And on today's podcast, I am honored to be joined by one very fun, funny, and interesting friend of mine. He is the founder and owner of 3D Retro, an awesome store in Glendale, California that sells collectible designer toys. But you might know him best as the founder of DesignerCon, the annual art and design convention that smashes all cool art things together into one amazing event coming up next month, November 22nd, 23rd, and 24th in Anaheim, California. I want to welcome my friend, the one and only Ben Gretzky. Hey, hey, hey. How's hey, it bud? going? Thank you. Sourdough, is it? Sourdough. Sourdough. I'll, I'll, you know, just call me Pumpernickel today. <laughs> Let's just go with that. Well, so when we started this podcast, right, it was the first time in my career uh-huh. that I ever had to consider, you know, had the opportunity to consider a pseudonym. So how did Sourdough come about? It's okay. So the, the, the story behind Sourdough is that there's, there's three answers to this. There's the short answer, okay. the, the well, medium answer. Listeners, line. So let's do the short answer. <laughs> So the short answer is that like sourdough, I am an acquired taste, right? Ah. So the the, the, medium, <laughs> <laughs> the medium answer is that I am a sourdough cookbook author. Oh. So I years ago wrote a sourdough cookbook. Now did the, you really? I did. I did. Can I get a copy? Of you that? can have. Oh is, my it God. On, is it on Amazon <laughs> right now? I tell you what, I have one. I'll autograph it. You can have it. I'll, I'll be. I love sourdough. Do you? Yeah. Well, pff, you've come to the right place, my well, friend. there you go. Okay. That's so good. So, but the bigger question is, uh-huh. why the hell did I write a sourdough cookbook? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> right? I, never, I never thought of that, but now that you mention it, yeah, why? Why, right? So, in 1991, uh-huh. I dropped out of college and I moved to the Arctic, okay? And I lived like Grizzly Adams off the grid in a log cabin, that log cabin that I built with my own hands and my uh, buddy uh, we lived up there and lived off the land like grizzly adams well sourdough Uh was a big part of our life i mean i used it to bake bread and pancakes and everything so i became very good at uh sourdough cooking so i got an opportunity to write a cookbook Uh the backstory there is in the gold rush era yeah when the you know gold miners were going to alaska they, the ones that stayed longer than one season that uh-huh. did well, they became known as sourdoughs. Ah. Oh. Now, how long have I known you? <laughs> it's, been, it's going on a few it's years now, my friend. Few, I had no idea. I'm full of surprises, that, my friend. The Arctic? You built a cabin? Well, let me be clear. It was 500 miles south of the Arctic Circle. That's we, still very cold. <laughs> it was f- the night, the first night I was you there. You still have all your toes? 68. Well, I got third degree frostbite on this one here. Wow. But uh, the first night I was there was 68 below zero. That's... <laughs> who, who are you? And what? And now, like now, I'm just living in beautiful Southern California, enjoying the sun, and I, I earned it. F- forget the Arctic. <laughs> I earned that's, it. That's that's amazing. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Well, it was just one of those like weird opportunities that you know maybe you bump into as a kid growing up, a college kid, whatever, and you're like, well, that sounds fucking weird and bizarre. Yeah, I got to do it. You know, and uh, well, we did it. All right, sourdough. Well, <laughs> there you go. Sorry, sorry you asked. <laughs> no, that's that is. I have a new like level of respect for you now. It's like if if the world is coming to an end, I'm coming to you. You, you come to me, man. I can start a fire in the rain. All right, so that's like, amazing. You know. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> But this isn't about me. This is about you. Yeah, enough about you. Is, what, are, what, are we, what are we talking about, about me. Here? Let's talk about you. What do you think about me? <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Ben, it is so good to see you, man. How are you holding up? Because, I mean, you're in the throes of planning DesignerCon next month. 
Yeah, we're about a month out. Yeah. And I'm uh, I'm I'm just trying to keep my uh, brain from melting. Mm, I bet. And um, I mean, you've been there. You oh were, yeah. You were part of the. You were in the trenches with us for a couple of years. Couple of years, yeah. But you've and leveled up in a big way. Y- yeah, it's it's. I got to tell you, Anaheim's a different beast than Pasadena. Mm. Uh, we're dealing with a much larger um, area. We're dealing with a. You know, it's just, you know, like Pasadena was very, like, it felt like the little house on the prairie type of deal. And Anaheim's like, we're no longer in Kansas anymore. We're in the big city. Yeah. So it's great in a way that we're able to grow the show there and their facilities are amazing and they've been great to us. We love it. But we've learned a lot, especially last year was our first year in Anaheim and the show was great, but we did learn a lot in terms of like just how to run the show in a place like Anaheim. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're, it's a little bit easier this year, but there's still a lot of work, a lot of work to be done. Well, it's a different animal, right? I mean, Pasadena was quaint compared to Anaheim, right? Oh yeah. But you know, and a lot of people think that we just wanted to leave Pasadena and that's not the fact we love Pasadena. Well, listen, I mean, I was there. I but remember you, the agony. <laughs> yeah, you were you were there the last year we were in Pasadena. The last two years, right? Yeah. But and I, and I remember the angst that you were because it was a big decision. Yeah, man. yeah. Plus, people need to understand that like the companies that were getting involved in the show, and these are still you know companies that are very relatable to our scene. Mm-hmm. Like like for instance, Metacom big player in our scene but the only way we were able to get metacom is if we were to be able to provide them with the proper space that they required sure. to present themselves because they're not going to come in in a 20 by 20 booth the right. metacom just won't do that so you know we had to move and i think it was i think it was a good decision you know like i said anaheim's a great facility it's a great city it's the house of the mouse yep. as they say so yep. And, you know, f- for the guys that fly in from other countries, they love it yep. because they're like, great. At the end of the show, we just go across the street to Disneyland and there's downtown Disney and Star Wars land now. Star Wars there now. And there's just so much to do. It's it's awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. But it's um, it's a lot of work. Well, change is, change is weird, right? Yeah. Sometimes change is hard. Oh, yeah. You know, it's bittersweet. You know, um, you grew up in Pasadena, 17 yeah. years or so, right? We were, you moved? we were in Pasadena for thir- uh, 12 years. 12 years. Okay. 12. Okay. Yeah. Because okay. we started in 2005. Okay. And our last year there was 2017. Okay. All right. Right. 2017. That's right. Yeah. And so, yeah. So to kind of level up, take it to the, net, the next level, create the space and the opportunity for some of these bigger uh, companies to come in and participate. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was a, it was a strategic decision that had to be made and I know you made it because I remember you made it incredibly thoughtfully. It was not something that you just on a whim said, we're yeah. doing this. You really, you know, we're wringing your hands over that decision. Yeah. We didn't want to leave. We really didn't. And we were even thinking about having the show 2018 in Pasadena, except the convention center had one of the halls already booked. It was Hall C, right. if you remember. Oh, yeah. Where, yeah. where Crew S Studios that's was right. set up. And that's, in. that was a fantastic hall. It was a fantastic hall. Yeah. It was, you know, it was a smaller hall, but yeah. it still let us expand to include about another, I would say, what, 50, 60 vendors. Right. So, and then when Pasadena came to us and said, in 2018, you're not going to be able to use that hall. We're like, you know what? I think you guys just made the decision for us. Yeah. We do need to move. Right. Right. So, but it's been great. It's been great. And we're still good friends with our, you know, friends over there in Pasadena and Anaheim's, you know, really, uh, really helping us out a lot. Yeah. 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 That's great. So, uh, you know, change is, is, is hard and challenging in part because of, you know, you've got in Pasadena that last year, I think we had what, 30,000 plus attendees. Yeah. So you've got 30,000 people who are used to coming to Pasadena. They're, they, they, they have a habit, 
you know, they yeah, know yeah. about Pasadena. So now you're asking them to go to Anaheim. I'm sure that the feedback was mixed or was it? I mean, were people excited about Anaheim or was it a little? The initial reaction, I think, from people was kind of a jerk reaction. It was like, how could you? You know, like, sure. we love Pasadena and it's it it the vibe that's part of the show is Pasadena. And, you know, they don't understand, like, there were, the last year we had problems with lines. They We had problems with capacity. We had problems with parking. Yep. We had problems with hotels. Like, the city was just busting at the seams. Yeah. And I told people, like, the vibe is not coming from Pasadena. The vibe of the show comes from the vendors and the attendees. And the people. That's and right. the people. The yeah, people right. bring the vibe. Yeah. We make the show what it is. And by we, I mean all the attendees, all the vendors, the staff, like everybody involved. Pasadena is a great location, but it's not the reason the show was what it was. Yeah. So the initial ju- reaction was a jerk reaction from people. And then I think what, what happened was people started to realize like, oh, wow, there's a lot more hotels here. Oh, you know, um, parking is so easy <laughs> in Anaheim. Yeah. Uh, oh, you know, it's like there's so much more space and they're bringing in these large companies. And I think, you know, there's still those people that, especially the ones that live in Pasadena, they're they're like, how could you take this away? Bring it back. We still get people saying like, will you ever bring it back? And we're just like, it's impossible. Yeah. It's not that we don't want to, it's just impossible logistically to bring a show of what designer con has become back to an, uh, a space like Pasadena. Yeah. You're not putting uh 10 pounds in a five pound bag, right? It's, it's <laughs> just know? not plausible. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, I'm trying to remember that last year in Pasadena, how I want to say there were 300 vendors. Uh, there were close to like 500, 500 vendors. Yeah. And, and then how many vendors do we have this year in Anaheim? Uh, this year we have over 750. That's incredible. Yeah, it's it's grown a lot. And remember, it's not so much because... So here's the thing. The last year we were in Pasadena, we took up from all the halls, ballrooms, and lobbies, we took up 95,000 square feet. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. In Anaheim last year, we took up over 350,000 square on, feet. Ben, I'm sorry. I think you might have said 9,500 square feet. You actually probably meant to say 95,000 square feet. 95,000. In Pasadena. And then what do you have in Anaheim? 350,000. So the size of the show is three times the amount. Yeah. But the vendors, it's not like we went from 500 to 1,500. We right. went from 500 to 750. And the reason for that is, is that once again, by looking at it, what was happening is we had all these great companies coming into the show and literally we had to restrict them to 10 by 20, 10 by 30 yeah. booths. Yeah. There were only a handful that had like 20 by 20 islands or uh, 20 by 20 end caps. Yeah. Why? Because we were restricted on space. Yep. So with Anaheim, we were able to configure the floor plan in such a way where it's like, we're not going to cram as much as possible into this floor space of 350,000. We're actually going to open up the aisles. We're going to let people have their 20 by 20 islands. We're going to have companies that need to have display cases and show off their products, yep. actually allow them to do that. So the growth in vendors only went up by about 250, but the floor plan went actually went up by 250,000 square feet. Yeah. And we're able to do art shows now and there. We're yeah. able to do uh, other types of exhibits in there. It's 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 just more playground for us. Well, as I recall last year, and it sounds like this year, I mean, we could do you in in Pasadena. You couldn't have pop ups oh, in, no. in the in the halls a, at Anaheim. You can these these brands, these vendors can can literally have pop up spaces. So you have shows within the show. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's. There's all kinds of uh, just things for people to do aside from just shop. Right. There's experiences now. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we, we love that kind of stuff. Are people taking it? To what extent are people taking advantage of the proximity to Disneyland uh, there in Anaheim, do you think? I mean, it's <laughs> probably growing year over uh, year. But. Well, we are closer to cities like San Diego now. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are, we're experiencing growth in terms of attendance from the Orange County yep. audience. Mm-hmm. 
And, um, you know, it's a lot of people in LA are like, oh, Anaheim's so far. And it's like, it's actually not that far. It's, yeah, yeah, it's a bit of a drive, but, you know, there's so much to do there. That's the other thing. Like, Pasadena's nightlife was very limited, as as you can remember. Like, I think the last time you were involved, we threw the party at the Masonic Temple. At the Masonic Club. That was the only place <laughs> well, available. To be, you know, well, to be really clear, a big part of the reason we had the Masonic Temple is because those assholes at the Rose were oh a nightmare God. to deal with yeah. the year before. So I was like, there is no way in hell we're doing yeah. a party. Yeah, at the, the Rose, Rose was just awful. But in terms of like things to do, yeah. going back, you know, while we're talking about this, is like just Anaheim has a lot more to do at night. Yeah. You know, there's there's all of downtown disney there's just like different parts of anaheim that you can go to and there's things to do right yeah no so. i i mean it's funny because you know over the years of my career i've been to so many trade shows at the expo center there in anaheim yeah so you know for me going back to anaheim last year it was just it was like putting on an old pair of jeans or something yeah it's you know? easy yeah, it's, it's very easy. easy yeah and like the registrate we were able to clean up our registration area mm-hmm. where like at Potentially, if you showed up, unless you showed up like right in the beginning where, you know, clearly there was like a line to get in because people were just waiting to open the door. There actually wasn't a line to register. People was, everybody already had their badges. Yeah. Everybody was just waiting to get in. Right. Walking up to registration during any time of the day was simple. Yeah. We just, it's space. It's the availability of space, which made it so great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what are you most excited about this year? Ooh, there's a lot of stuff going on. Let's hear about it. Break it break it down. So um, we have a, uh, you know, we, we're working with Medicom again this year. And Medicom came in last year and they've never done the show. They only could tell like what the show was about based on what we told them and what they saw through social media and things like that and videos. And so they didn't know what to expect. And this year they they know... So there's a lot of cool exclusives coming out. We have a a really cool artist series coming out, which is starting to leak out there. If you follow our social media. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that because I think Kano has a... Kano has one in there yeah. and Joe Ledbetter has one in there. There's more artists. Yeah. So we'll, yeah. Yeah. So it's an artist series. You got to You got to come to learn because this is, this is a big, I want to really, I was excited to ask you about that because I think it's a, a no brainer that Decon would have an artist series. Yeah. But it was about timing and the right opportunity. Well, and- it's also about convincing Medicom to do it because sure. all of these artists, I, th- I think all of them in the pack have never had a bear brick, not because they didn't want to do a bear brick because as anyone knows, or as any artist knows, you can't just approach Metacom and say like, hey, I want to do a bear brick. It's very hard yeah. to get them to agree to do that. So, and it's, we so were, it's an honor. Yeah, it is. And we were we were very lucky that uh, Metacom was so gracious to us in letting us do that. So a big, you know, shout applause out. to them. Yeah. yeah, shout out to our uh, guys in Japan at Metacom. So, okay, so without naming names, unless you want to, how many artists in the series this year? This is a five pack. Five pack. So five artists in the pack. Five and- artists in the pack. And then the other thing that we did was we actually have our mascot as a bear brick this year as well. So we're really going gung ho on the whole Vincent, mascot in thing. the house. Yeah, Vincent. We actually learned last year. So last year we worked with Kid Robot on, re- on releasing the Designer Con Dunny series. Yeah. And uh, we realized that one of the favorite Dunnies out of that was our mascot. We actually thought, like, we're going to do this, and people are going to be like, great, they stuck their mascot in here. This is so stupid. Sure, sure. And people loved it. Yeah. People loved our mascot as a dunny, and they were they were like hunting for the mascot. Yeah. So we're like, could it be that people actually like our mascot? So, and we found out, yeah, they do. Right. So we have the Bear Brick this year. We also have a project that we did with Jason Freeney mm. that's going to be coming out this year. That's exciting. Uh, we have... For the Sofubi fans, we have our mascot in a very Japanese stylized Sofubi figure mm-hmm. that we're hoping it looks good. We're gonna have that this year. There's uh, there's a lot of good stuff, a lot of good stuff coming. But I, I mean, aside from our stuff, mm-hmm. there's just a lot of things that are gonna be uh, released at the show. Yeah. So you know, we we're working with companies like. 
Toy Cube to have releases. We're working with Mighty Jacks. Mm -hmm. We're working with uh, Bait mm -hmm. to have special releases. Our good friends at Johnny Cupcakes yep. are coming out. Um, we have a, <laughs> I don't know if I'm allowed to mention it, but we have. Come a, on, Ben. Come on. Exclusive we, <laughs> story right here. Not well, real art. <laughs> one of the things that we're working on at Decon is we we feel like we have the toy market pretty much covered. Yes. We have uh, the toy guys there. We have a lot of the artists there. Then the one thing that we're kind of lacking mm -hmm. and we're slowly building up on it is the apparel. Sure. Because streetwear, uh, as anybody knows, streetwear is a big player yep. in the street art scene. Yep. You know, there's tons of co collaborations that are constantly done. Artists are constantly working with these brands. You know, the guys that collect the toys buy the streetwear brand. So we're slowly or steadily getting into these apparel brands. Yeah. And we were lucky enough where we met up with Jeff Staple. Mm. Uh, and we're doing something very special this year for designer con with jeff staple that's so exciting yeah that's it's amazing. gonna be i mean he's the dude yeah it's gonna be really <laughs> cool uh but also in terms of like clothing brands extra large right from japan yep. is coming in really big this year mm -hmm. they are doing a very special collaboration with deface mm -hmm. and uh there is a release going on with it right now in japan but we can't all go to japan yeah. so what they have agreed to do is bring not just the items that are available in Japan, but the company has been gracious enough to create exclusives for DesignerCon mm -hmm. that people will be able to get mm -hmm. at the show. So that's another really big thing that's going to be happening. They even have, I think, a basketball court coming that's into the show this so year. So fun. So it's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun. But um Things like that. There's there's a lot of stuff going on. A lot of stuff. So I mean, all of that news, that very exciting news, points to, uh, you know, I think a fundamental truth that people better buy their VIP tickets to get in there that VIP night because oh, yeah. I mean, a lot of stuff is going to be gone. Yes, uh, and we saw it last year. Right. You know, um, and the thing is, a lot of people are like, oh man, you know, I bought a VIP ticket last year, and now all these people are going to come in. And, like, people don't understand. We restrict the number of VIP tickets. We mm. still have some, at least while we're recording this show, mm. we still have VIP tickets, but we do restrict the number because we do want the hall to be very clear and easy to maneuver around for these VIPs that Friday night, which is VIP night, and the first hour on Saturday, which is the VIP hour on Saturday. Mm. So, but yeah, we did notice last year that the VIPs were the only ones to get like the very, very hard to find, very limited exclusive figures and exclusive drops that were happening at the show. Yeah. So, and the cost of the VIP ticket, at least compared to other shows, I think were pretty affordable. It's, oh my God. I would argue that Decon is the, you know, arguably the best value out there. Yeah. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. So yeah. we, we've always tried to keep it where, or our philosophy has always been, don't spend your money at the door, spend it inside the hall. Yeah. But at the same time, we need to cover costs. Yeah. So, you know, the VIP ticket being what it is, but we also give a lot of things like the mascot dunny, uh, mascot bear brick, that is actually available or comes with the VIP package. So you're yeah. already oh. getting a toy valued at about 20 to $25. Yep with your VIP along with, you know, a pin and some other goodies that are being thrown in yep. by some of the other companies. We have a lot of companies coming in from, you know, Hong Kong and mm -hmm. Singapore and uh, parts of China, uh, you know, these big toy companies. Like we have Pop Mart coming this year. We have, uh, what is it, 1983 toys or 52 toys and all these all these big brands yeah. that are very large yeah. in the Asian market, they're coming to Decon. And mm -hmm. they're, you know, there's a lot of stuff that the VIPs are gonna get that uh is gonna be very cool. Well, if I could sing your praises for a minute, because I mean one of the things that I've always appreciated about you and working with you and having known you now for many years, I think, mm -hmm. you've always been, I think, well, first and foremost, you're a fan, right? I mean, you're yeah. you're a fan. Unfortunately. And, and that informs, 
And that informs your your ethos. That informs your motives and your intentions, right? And so from what I've observed, you you go out of your way to make this as artist friendly as possible. Yeah. And as and that means making it as affordable for artists as possible in terms of booth space and making sure artists, you know, ha- oh, yeah. you know, have what they need to be successful. And um, you know, and it's it is it is it, I've always thought it was a great value for vendor and attendee. Well, thank if you. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, our costs and unfortunately our my accounting team hates me for this. <laughs> I think you've actually met the CFO. Yes, so, okay. so yeah, you, I, I've met you the know, CFO. <laughs> you know, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yes. But the the accounting team hates our price structure because they're like, uh, are you gonna break even? Are you gonna be able to pay for this stuff? And I'm like, yeah. Uh, w- once the show opens up, we'll make some money. <laughs> so <laughs> it's 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 always been a uphill battle in terms of like cost and expenses and things like that. But our philosophy has always been, we need to make the show affordable. If you were to compare the other shows that happen in Anaheim or just happen in our scene, you and compare the costs of our booths our tickets, our VIPs, and what we give you. Um, yeah, it's, it, it's, we're still the lowest priced one out there. I, I, I think they call it a uh, good bang for the buck. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you know, that's a technical phrase. Yeah, you yeah. get a lot more bang for your buck but, at <laughs> DesignerCon. So that's, that's, that should be our new slogan right there. <laughs> Forget com. the whole pop art scene. <laughs> so yeah. But, um, and then, you know, there's, uh, the other thing is, is there's a lot of new stuff coming to the show this year, which, more, like you said, more bang for your buck. And, you know, one of the biggest things that we're, as a fanboy, which I'm very proud of, is we have this year coming to the show Beyond Eden. Oh. So, for the people that don't know what Beyond Eden is. Yes. Uh, Beyond Eden was, uh, or is, kind of like this pop, surrealist, lowbrow, underground, street art as ma- I'm trying to think of as many terms that fall into this art show. And uh, it was uh, founded originally by Juxtapose mm-hmm. and uh, Greg Escalante, yep. uh, our good friend, God rest his soul. Yep. May he rest in peace. Yep. And, um, you know, basically it was to bring all these amazing galleries into into the shining light. Yeah, yeah. And one of the things that... Beyond Eden kind of helped form was Little Topia. Yes. And Little Topia was this section at the LA Art Show, which yep. was honestly the only reason I ever went to the it LA Art the Show. Part. It was the it best was part. The yeah. most amazing street art that yeah. you could find, the most amazing pop surrealist stuff. Mm-hmm. And it was just like I, I just re- remember going there and I'm like, oh my God, this is so great. How mm-hmm. am I how am I gonna not buy everything? And no toys, just like really cool art. Well, and little, you were honored there a couple of years I ago, was, were you I, not? Uh, Greg, <laughs> this was Greg. Uh, Greg's idea, which I was like, I don't know if I really deserve it. He go, he, they honored me as collector of the year, which my joke was like, thank you for giving me the award for the guy who buys the most stuff. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. You know, so, but it was, yeah, I was honored. And, you know, maybe because of that, I have an even deeper sure. relationship with this um, with this section of LA Art Show. But it was very hard to hear that the LA Art Show basically canceled Little Topia. Yeah. And Little Topia is not coming back to the LA Art Show. Who knows why? But um, we went back as a collector, as a fanboy. I was like, we need to do something. Yeah. And um, we sat down with a couple of the galleries and we said, look... Let's go even one step back. Let's go to the original and let's let's go to Beyond Eden, which is what this was really founded on. And all these um all these galleries were like, "Yeah, let's do it." And I said, "I will make sure to give you guys a home." And that's what DesignerCon is now. It's a home to Beyond Eden. It's a it's a home to these what we call white wall galleries because yep. Yep. the the booths are actually set up in the Beyond Eden area with hard walls. A lot of people that attend the show know that most of the setup of the show is pipe and drape. Yep. We keep our costs down that way. And for most vendors, I would say for 99% of the vendors, that's all they need. Yep. But for the galleries, which are selling art pieces, they need the hard walls. They got to hang. 
And that is going to be one of the coolest things that we add this year. You're going to be able to basically visit Beyond Eden or Little Topia or whatever it is mm -hmm. you, you call it at uh, DesignerCon this year. So exciting. How yeah. many galleries are participating? I believe we have something like six galleries this mm -hmm. year, mm -hmm. which doesn't seem like a lot. It's going to be great. But it was short notice. Yeah, right, right. It was one of those things where we found out about the news about Little Topia and it 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 was very disturbing to me. Yeah. And I was like we have to do something. And they were like let's do it in let's do it next year. We'll figure it out. I'm like no 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 no. There's not going to be a Little Topia at the LR show next year. Yeah. We're there in what January, we're in November. Right. Let's let's do it at the same time. Yeah, now's the time. Yeah. So we were able to get Think Space, La Luz, KPP Projects, which mm -hmm. is a big one, mm -hmm. Dark Art Emporium, Modern Eden, and uh, Tierra del Sol yeah. to participate. That's great. And they're they're bringing it. Like if you if you follow any of those galleries mm -hmm. on social media, they're very excited, and you can see some of the artists that they're going to be bringing. Yeah, so I'm I'm super pumped about this. You know, earlier when you were. Um, talking about what's happening on the apparel side. Yeah. I actually thought you were going to talk about this part because this is actually big news too in yeah. terms of how Decon is growing and dimensionalizing itself beyond toys. Yeah, we we have to. The show uh the show has to grow. I always feel like the show's kind of like uh, maybe it's not the best way to compare it, but it's kind of like a shark. Where gotta it's keep like moving. you got to keep moving, <laughs> yeah. and you got to keep growing, or else we die. Mm. And I'm not, I'm not saying it in such a way where it's like we got to grow the show to a million square feet, or else it's not going to go anywhere. It's like no, that's not the case. the The show floor is actually the same size as last year, mm -hmm. but we're adding elements to mm -hmm. it. We are adding new elements. We're taking away some things that possibly didn't work, and we're adding in elements that we're hoping will work and. I, I think from the response that we've been getting, it will. Yeah, well, and it's also one of those special t times, I think, for an event like Decon because, you know, history is sort of meeting you at the right time. And we're enjoying right. this creative renaissance in a way. And and it's not like you are uh, trying to grow a show that there is no demand for. I mean, demand is at an all-time high yeah. for art and culture. Absolutely. And Decon is is supplying that demand. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I, I feel that way. I mean, at the end of the day, we really do it because we love it. That's and right. And it's so much fun. And that's and, apparent. Yeah. and I think so. You know, it's kind of like fans for fans. Right. So, but yeah, we, we do see that the show is community-driven. Yeah. And... Honestly, the whole reason DesignerCon ever started was because, you know, I also, as you mentioned, I have the toy store 3D Retro. Before I had a retail space, I was like, how do I get in front of the collectors? And I was like, the only way to do this is like, I got to do a show. And I called up all the other local retailers and said, would you guys be part of this if I did it? And they said, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. And that's that's literally how this whole thing started. Yeah. So it's kind of the same concept today. It's a, it, on a much bigger scale, but it's like, hey, we're doing the show, and there's a lot of collectors and fans yeah. of this art that you sell that are going to be there. Well, and as I recall, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought part of the sort of backstory here was that Comic Con had kind of di disenfranchised the toy lovers and the toy collectors years ago. And that was also part of the frustration yeah. that led to inspiration. We don't, we don't want to call out anybody, but <laughs> sorry. I, I, well, oops. you can, but now that, now that you mentioned it, that's, that's a big part of it. Yes. San Diego comic-con used to be a great show. And we for, love San Diego comic-con. We love it. Yeah. I, you know, I, I, you know, yeah, it's great. So, uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> Man, I hope so. nobody from that. <laughs> Sorry, I take that. Is... We can blur, we can uh, edit that out. Oh, it's fine. <laughs> Leave it in. It's it's great. Well, the truth. It's the truth. But yeah, what ended up happening was a lot of the vendors that used to be part of this art toy culture mm -hmm. in San Diego were having a very hard time uh, getting space, and then the ones that were able to get the space were not able to afford it. Yeah, right. 
It's tough. It's really tough. When well, because you're... it's afford. I mean, when you say afford it, I mean affording the booth is just like a sixth of the cost. Right. I mean, you know, travel, hotel, food. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and that's the other thing. Like San Diego, beautiful city. I love it, but especially with the show, it's tough to get a hotel room. Yeah. It's tough to fly into San Diego. If you're going to fly in, are you going to land in LA and take a two hour or three hour drive? Mm-hmm. It's yeah, there's a lot of costs involved. Yeah. Well, okay. So decon, you know, it's a blessing and a curse, right? In terms of growing, because, you know, I know, you know, for, you know, of course we exhibit, you know, mm-hmm. at, at the event. So my time is limited yeah. anyway to go, you know, look around. Right. Um, but, you know, it's overwhelming, right? With the amount of art and toys and vendors and artists. And it's like, the challenge is how do you see it all in three days? And you add it a day. Like that's the other thing. Too. Yeah. <laughs> Buy a VIP ticket and make there sure you, you start on Friday. That's that, right. I mean, be very efficient with your time. Yeah. I mean, I would recommend definitely take a look at the map. Uh, if there's certain artists and vendors that you want to specifically see, kind of map it out. We yep. do have a awesome uh electronic map yep. on the website which lets you do that and mm-hmm. lets you mark the booths and you can print it out and do all that oh, good that's stuff. super cool that's that sounds new i mean you've had the electric map i mean the digital yeah, map for a yeah, while had it but for, I did, how long could you click it you, and select you, vendors i think since the beginning oh, since geez, the beginning okay. of it but <laughs> not a lot of people know that that you can like click on it and actually saves the that's amazing that you click on. yeah we yeah, gotta do so, that promote that yeah yeah it's great but yeah it's it's still even with three days it's very overwhelming when I walk the floor myself, mm. I feel like when I I can I can walk it three, four, five times, and every single time I will find something that I'm like, how did I not see this before? <laughs> right. Like, oh my god, I need to get this. Like, I'm I must have, I must have just did I just walk by you or was this not out earlier <laughs> or did you just add this like like so. It's tough because walking the show floor, you there's so much stimulation in terms of collectibles and art and things like that. Yeah, where it's hard to miss certain things. So, you know, walk the floor a couple of times and uh, I guarantee you, you'll there's, there's something for everybody at this show. Yeah. And uh, that's what makes it so great. But yeah, it's, it's you know, I would say make sure you come all three days and that way you can really enjoy it. Like yep. don't walk the entire floor. Yeah. I think people let, let's emphasize this point, right? Because it, for those people who haven't been yeah. right, uh, they don't know how much stuff that, I mean, it is overwhelming. It is a, 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 in the most, in the best way, a yeah. deluge <laughs> yeah. of, of art Pe- and culture. People get yeah. their entire holiday shopping list done. At yeah, designer con. Yeah. Because there's something for and everybody. And you can do that. You can get your whole shopping list yeah. done if you manage your time. Yeah. It's yeah. it's it's great because there's something for the girlfriend and there's something for the for the boyfriend and there's something for the wife and the mother and there's something for the kids and yep. there's something for dad that there's a lot for dad. And um <laughs> so there's you know and, and, and yeah, and, and and there's a lot for the kids, the Yes. It's such a kid friendly show. That's right. And it's um, a family friendly show. Like yeah. let's let's just emphasize that. Too. Yeah, it's very family friendly. Yeah. Like we want you to bring your kids. We want you to go shopping with your kids. It, it isn't one of those shows where it's like, oh man, you know, it's like I can't bring the kids because they're going to have a miserable time. It's like, no, nah, your kids are going to love it. No, this is kind of like taking your kid down the cereal aisle at the grocery store. Oh. Like they want it all. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's the only bad part. It's like, it's not the fact that you won't find anything for your kid. You're going to, your kid's going to find way too much. <laughs> that's right. So great problem to have. Yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's, um, it's awesome. It's just great. So you have been doing this a long time. You know, yes, you're a fan uh, and you're the the creator and the producer of it. And you're, but you know, but at your core too, you're an entrepreneur, right? I mean, you, you've started the store, you've started the, the, the event, you have other businesses. Um, 
you know, so for artists who come to Decon, right, and mm-hmm. you know, artists that have been many years, right, they've really probably fine tuned oh, yeah. their approach to mm-hmm. optimize their time there and be successful there. Yeah, you like, you learn. That's right. So let's talk a little bit about. Let, let, you know, let's talk tips. Let's talk strategies sure. for artists who are coming to help them be more successful. And this is a disclaimer. Do not quote me on anything that I say here because <laughs> if you if you take my advice and you still don't sell anything, please it's, don't blame me. It's not me. on us. No. Right. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that's right. But there are a couple of tips that I get emails about this. Yes. Um, first time vendors always ask, like, what do you recommend that I bring? And what I would say is because of the wide range of buyers at our show, I would say bring a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. Bring your $10 and $20 items. Bring a lot more of those because you're going to sell a lot more of those. But also, if you are an artist and you have an original that you sell for six, seven hundred, a thousand dollars, bring one, bring two. What's the harm? You're probably going to sell it at designer con because there are those buyers that look for that. Mm -hmm. If you have anything limited edition, if you have anything that you can make as an exclusive, a colorway, you know, our fans look for that kind of stuff. So definitely bring that kind of stuff. But basically it's about range. Make Mm -hmm. sure you bring a range of products. Don't think that all I'm going to do is bring prints. No, if you sell t-shirts, bring the t-shirts too. If you have pins, bring the pins. If you have uh, customized whatever, ceramics or something, bring that too. Because the the variety of buyers that we have should be just as, there should be just as much of a variety in your products. So it's key to remember that when, when you come in as a vendor. So diversity in product range and merchandising, try to have uh, uh, different pi- price points from yeah, low definitely. to high. Yeah. And um, don't be afraid to take a risk or two with a higher priced item. Yeah, don't be afraid. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, we have people, we have vendors that come in and they have toys and you know resin figures that they have that are of the $50 price point. And then in the same space, they have a three foot version of it that they're selling for two to three thousand dollars. Yeah. Usually, when I come up to them at the end of the show, I go like, "Hey, so how did it go?" I'm like, we sold everything. Right. You sold the big one. Yeah. Do you see it here? Uh, no, actually, I don't. <laughs> yeah, we sold it. It's like that's awesome. Yeah. We also have you know celebrities that come through the show. Yep. Jack that- Black came last year. Jack Black came last time. Yeah. And a lot of these celebrities. I mean, there's a few other ones that kind of don't want to be yeah. known that they're there, but. We know that they're there and they're big collectors and they look for these special, hard to find things. It's, you know, these guys are, they, they're they known for buying these collectibles that they can put in their big houses and they, you know, when they have guests over, it's a conversation piece. So, you know, a lot of the time we tell the vendors out there, like, if you have something special, bring it. Yeah. Don't be afraid to do that because you never know who's going to come up to you at the show and be like, I I need this. I want to buy it. Yeah. So yeah, yeah it's cool. What uh, what what are some more tips? Network. Networking is key. And honestly, we've had vendors that have come up to us, and they've done the show. You know, they'll do the show the first year, and they'll usually tell us like, "Man, your show is amazing." And I'm like, "Great. Did you sell a lot of product? Make a lot of money?" And they're like, no, I didn't sell a damn thing. I'm like, whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait, that's horrible. That's like, for me, that's like a nightmare. It's like, oh my gosh, what, like, yeah. I'm so sorry. And they're like, no, man, your show is amazing. I got to network with all these people and I'm gonna be making so many deals with this person and this company and this you know, manufacturer. And like, I am so happy that I was here Yes, because they came by and they saw my stuff and I didn't have this and I didn't have that and I didn't didn't have this to sell and I all I had was these products but next year I'm going to come in strong because now I have all these relationships that I made from your show I'm psyched and I'm excited and it's going to be amazing next year I'm like whoa that's great and I we hear that all the time we also know 
that we have a lot of industry people coming through. Mm -hmm. So studios, art design houses, manufacturers of toys from even some of the larger brands, animation studios, uh, people from all these companies come in through the show and they network. They look at your product. They may not buy anything. Most likely they won't. Uh, but, you know, they'll come through and it'll be great. You know, they'll make arrangements. We, we know we know vendors that, <laughs> it's funny because we know vendors that will sell non-licensed products mm -hmm. that are, mm -hmm. you know, they have <laughs> IPs on them. And then somebody from that studio will walk by their booth and, you know, hand them their card. And they're afraid like, oh, man, I'm sorry. Are you going to sue me right now? They're like, no, we actually want to work with you and make this le legitimate. Yeah. And that's awesome. Yeah. So networking is key. It's very important at our show. So what a, what a great opportunity, right? Because, I mean, how many times right in the year or do you have so many people under one roof who have a common yeah shared interest and right? and the important thing is about our show is that the communication level is mm -hmm. or the communication channels are wide open whereas a lot of the trade shows that a lot of these artists go to otherwise <laughs> they sell 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 and you know there's large crowds and there's barely any time to talk to anybody and just the communication lines are very hard. Whereas in our show, there's still that bridge directly to the artist. There's still that yeah. bridge directly to the vendor. And I mean, it works for fans, yeah. but it also works for these companies. And I think that's why we get such a large amount of these industry guys. Because let's take example Comic-Con again. A lot of the industry guys that are there are working their booths. Right. You know, there's a lot of entertainment companies at Comic-Con and, and it's a great show for that. Like, you know, Warner Brothers and Fox and all these guys, they're there and they're selling and, you know, they're giving out promotional items. But for the most part, you know, they're so busy with that, that they don't have time to do the type of communication and relationships and networking that they get from designer con. And a lot of our vendors as artists see that. And a lot of the studios know that too. Right. So yeah, it's, it's awesome. Yeah, no, that, that is powerful. I mean, one of the points that I want to emphasize here too, and I think this is a big reason why Decon has become such a fan favorite and is a fan favorite is that there are a few places where you can actually meet the artist. Oh yeah. Yeah. And man, you know, they're there, they're in the booth. They do signings. They do, you know, any number of activities there. Mm -hmm. You get to meet the artist. Like, yeah. That is incredible. It's huge. Yeah. I've been to many, many art gallery openings and shows with artists that I love and adore. And, you know, I'll, I'll buy either a print or I, if I can afford an original, then <laughs> maybe if it's like, you know, four by six. Ten bucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Uh, but, you know, even then at the art shows, it's very hard to approach yes, the artist. Yes. Why? Because they're in total work mode. They've worked a year on this gallery uh, exhibition and like it's so hard to approach them and talk to them. Whereas when they're doing designer con, you know, they're maybe there in their booth and they might have an assistant there selling with them and they're just like, they're relaxed. They're, yeah. hey, yeah, it's like, you can come up to them and say, like, I bought your book or I bought your figure. Can you please sign this for me? Or they buy the print right there. And while they're buying the print, they're like, love your stuff. You know, what what influenced you this? Or we've had multiple um, podcasts and mm -hmm. uh, vloggers yep. come up to artists in their booth while they're in their booth and say, like, can I just do a five-minute interview with you? And most of these guys are like, yeah, absolutely. Ask me anything you want. Right. right. And it's that right there is so cool it's 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 one of the reasons why i started the show is because yeah. i wanted to meet my favorite artists well you know and the flip side of that though is that that you know on the surface right it, it, the implication of what we're talking about might might seem to say that you know this show is you know all about the artist uh and it is but really what we're also saying is that it's also all about the fans yeah First and foremost, it's about the fans. Yeah, I always say that with without the fans, there would be no show. Yeah, I mean the vendors, we love them, and 
we appreciate them just as much. And without them, there would be no show either. But, you know, the fans are the ones that make it out and trek over there and spend three days with us supporting these vendors. It's so key that they support these artists. It doesn't matter how big you you think the artist is. They need your support. They're selling a $20 book. You know, if you love their art and you can't afford a $1,000 original, buy the $20 book, buy the $10 pin, yeah. buy the $2 sticker. It's like, if you like these artists, support them. And that's what our fans have been since day one. We love our fans. We love it. We love our attendees. And it doesn't matter if you're a VIP or you're just a one-day ticket holder. Yeah, We appreciate everybody that comes to the show because they are supporting the scene. They are supporting this. When It's funny because when we first started DesignerCon back in 2005, the scene was almost like, it, it almost seemed like there was a lull. It was, uh, it almost seemed like this whole art toy thing and lowbrow art, street art, like it almost seemed like, wow, it's going away and nobody's really into it anymore. Or if they were like, where is everybody? So by us throwing the show and co doing this collective fan base of like all these people coming together, that's really what it, what it's all about. And the other thing that we already talked about, about these different, you know, fa facets that we're going into, whether it's the apparel or the gallery spaces, this all coincides. Like if we were to do a Venn diagram, it's just like D -d 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 all these little yeah. circles that, yeah. you know, collide into each other. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to bring that all together so all these fans can meet these fans and be like, you like this guy? I like this guy. I yep. buy his shirts all the time. He has a toy? Are you kidding me? Wait a minute. He has a shirt? Are you kidding me? Like, there's so many things about how these worlds collide. Yep. And we're just trying to bring it all together. Celebrate. That's, That's right. all it is. It's just a big party, if you think about it. Well, it's like you find your tribe, right? Like, yeah. like everybody is sort of there because of our mutual love and appreciation and fanaticism for yeah. <laughs> for art and design and and artists and 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 you know pop culture whatever it is and you go there and you discover new things yeah. like that's the other thing too it's like yeah you might the artist that you love is going to be there but there's going to be all these other artists and all these other opportunities oh, yeah. that you just don't know about and the discover the 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 the, the discoverability factor is is one of the things that makes decon so rich yeah it's it's awesome it's so cool there there's been multiple times where i myself have walked the floor right and i'm like i don't know who you are yeah thank you for being part of the show mm -hmm. right i love your stuff and like i'm a fan right so you better come back next so year. yeah so <laughs> so 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 just to point out what you're saying the founder creator of designer con himself <laughs> is always surprised at the cool new art and yeah. artists that you discover yeah. yeah and you know it's it's funny because you know we do we do look through all the vendors that come in but like most of the time when you're in the show it's like we're like okay we got to go work on something else congrats we'll see you on the floor and you know i i'll walk the floor and i'm like wow, this is cool. Like, I'm glad I, I got you into the show. It's like, this stuff's really neat. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's like, uh, we, we surprise ourselves. Sometimes. It's, 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 you know, and I, and I do want to reemphasize a point because you, you said early on, it's like the, the, the people and the fans, you know, the attendees, the vendors, just everybody that comes together is really what makes Decon Decon, right. you know? And, and, you know, I, I'll never forget the first time I went to Decon and <laughs> I had heard about Decon. I'd heard about Decon and for whatever reason, I'd never made it. And I went and it was, it actually is what motivated me to pick up the phone and call you and yep. try to find and try to be friends because I was just like, this is so special. This like when I oh. walked out that day, that first time, just the feeling I had of joy and happiness. Motivation. Motive. Yeah. It's just yeah, it's so inspiring. It was, it was awesome. Yeah. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that. I really do. Yeah. And um, we get that a lot. We get a yeah. lot of people saying like, every time I step out of your show, 
I feel so motivated to just go back to my studio and do something. Yeah. Make something. Yeah. Create. Yeah. And we've had people come come to us and say, like, I wanted to be an artist and I wanted to make toys. And then like I kind of lost that motivation mm -hmm. and I didn't know where to start. I didn't know where to begin. And then I came to your show and I met this person and I talked to that person. And I came back home and I'm like, I'm just creating stuff now just because I can, yeah. just because I became motivated. And that's that's the best feeling in the world for yeah, us. Right. So sure. yeah, it's 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 just amazing. Well, I feel like we would be uh you know, negligent if we did not uh, uh, talk about this year's sponsors. Sure. And uh, I know you have a lot of great sponsors that we are do. lining up. Um, and, you know, they they deserve to be uh, 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 mentioned. celebrated and mentioned and, sh yeah. and shouted out to. So tell us about the sponsors this year. So let's see. Sponsor-wise, um, here we go. Let me let me actually pull out my list. Um so uh, from the you can see the sponsors located on the homepage of our website. We highlight them very much. So uh, Mighty Jacks, which has been a sponsor for several years, they're great, an amazing toy company. Uh, Jackson Awe, who's the owner of the company, has actually won awards for the amazing work that his company does. If you don't know who Mighty Jacks is, please go go to our homepage, click on that link. You will find some amazing products, and they bring the heat to the show. A new one this year, Wacom. Wacom is uh, a sponsor of the show. So good. And here's the amazing part. Mm. So this year they will be showing off their brand new, never before seen Wacom tablet at DesignerCon. So if you're a Wacom They're tablet user. They're launching, announcing. They are uh, launching exclusive a new product. premiere product. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. And for the first time ever, Secret Walls is teaming up with Wacom. And for the very first digital Wacom duel. So we're going to have so teams compete using Wacom tablets where they tag in, tag out. And so the, this is going to be on like on a big video screen or something. Oh, yeah. Oh, incredible. oh it's going to be amazing. amazing. We've teamed up with Lincoln Design. Mm -hmm. And um, out of Portland, right? Lincoln Design, yeah, yeah. Lincoln Design out of Portland. Mm -hmm. They and they they're working with Wacom to mm -hmm. put all this together. And it's going to be, um, this amazing battle where it's actually a couple of battles. It's going to be like semifinals, finals, oh, great. championship. And then the winning team wins, of course, a brand new Wacom tablet. Uh, that's amazing. So, so over three days, this competition is unfolding. Correct. Yeah. So you'll get to see that. Mm. Uh, another uh, great sponsor this year, Network. If yes. you, if you yes. haven't heard of Network, they are an app that you can download for your ios it's ntwrk mm -hmm. take the vowels out that's how that's the cool way to spell it yeah, yeah, yeah. network <laughs> so uh <laughs> that wasn't the mic broken that's actually how you're supposed <laughs> to say it but yeah they're they're coming to us and the stage this year is actually sponsored by network mm -hmm. and we are we're teaming up with them to provide them with some very special mm -hmm. products mm -hmm. for the network app, mm -hmm. uh, especially for those people that cannot make it to the show for whatever yeah, reason. Right. So, well, that, it, by the way, let me be clear about something because a lot of folks that don't maybe don't know network, this is kind of taking decon global because I mean, the, the oh, app yeah. is a global platform. Yes. Yeah, it's worldwide. Yeah. If you haven't downloaded it already, go ahead and do that. Um, it's like I said, NTWRK. You can click on the link off of our homepage mm -hmm. and some of the some of the products that they've already done drops on some of the most exclusive products in terms of toys shoes apparel uh prints yep. all that stuff it's it's pretty cool stuff that they're doing yep. so they they're teaming up with us shout out to network yep there you go um our good friends at johnny cupcakes oh, are yeah. back again yes i gotta tell you i i've seen the designs for the shirts this year they are killer like not to like poo poo on the <laughs> on the previous ones, but man, like Johnny's team like hit it out of the park this year in terms of like designs. And I would say that if you want official designer con uh, apparel, yes, like stop by the Johnny Cupcakes booth like first and foremost because this stuff's gonna sell out. It's so cool, and they've tied in the whole Anaheim theme. They've tied in the whole space theme, right on. And it's gonna be amazing. Very cool. Uh, another great sponsor this year, Sony Pictures Animation. Nice. Yeah. So we 
you know, we we when we work with the studios, we got to work on some way to get the studios involved without having them set up this massive monstrosity of a booth yeah. and give out prints and yeah. stupid things. That's right. So it's got to be the way you work with a studio like that has got to to resonate as as authentic and real to the culture of the event. Right. Yeah. And one of my, you know, one of my favorite cartoons that actually came out and won an Oscar, mm. you probably know what I'm talking mm -hmm. about, is Spider-Verse. Yep. And the reason I realized why I love Spider-Verse so much is because they actually, Sony Animation went out and got actual artists, not just like in-house, right. but actual artists that are known in the scene to create artwork for this animation. Yeah. And I think it blew the animation community away. Yeah. And it surprised everyone. I definitely surprised Disney. And yeah. it, it was a big hit. We are happy to announce that we are bringing in a AR experience. Augmented with so reality. Augmented reality. Yep. Featuring the artwork of Spider-Verse uh, from Sony Animation Pictures. We've gotten the original one of the original and main artists involved, Jim Mafood, to participate in this. Amazing. He's created original artwork right. and original AR content yeah. for this. And you will be able to enter the Spider-Verse with this AR uh asset. This is big news. It's it's huge. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's uh, maybe we maybe we're downplaying it a little bit, but I think it's one of those things where we want people to show up and kind of like be like, yeah. holy moly. Yeah. They let them kind of discover uh, just how much it's going to blow their mind. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be so cool. And another company involved in that, which I should mention, is a company called iJax, mm -hmm. which uh, is helping us with a lot of the augmented reality okay. uh, content. Like a tech company? Yeah, yeah, they they specialize just in that. Got it. Uh, other sponsors to mention: Metacom Toy, of course, yep. which we've already talked about. They're bringing the heat, um, and a lot, a lot of cool products. Uh, you should watch their Instagram and our Instagram for some of the announcements. Fye is back. Mm -hmm. Fye, a lot of people. It's weird. A lot of people sometimes look at it and go like, "Why is Fye involved and a big sponsor?" And honestly, we love Fye because. Even though they're one of the larger retailers out there, some of them, some people might even call them a big box. Mm -hmm. But Fye is a huge supporter of the art toy scene. Yeah, they really do support it, and you've got to give them props to that. Yes, they support the manufacturers no matter how big or how small. Yes, there's a lot of pop on their site and things like that. But in all honesty, like they buy from some of the smaller distribution channels as well. Yeah. And they encourage uh, manufacturers, even manufacturers like 3D Retro, they encourage us to, hey, can you make a toy with this artist for us? Or can you sell us an exclusive colorway? So, you know, I would say that if you haven't done already, check out FYE. You might be surprised as to how many art figures they actually support and how many art figures they actually have on their site and what they bring to the show. Excellent. They're, they're a great sponsor. Extra large clothing, mm -hmm. which we've talked about. Like I said, they're going to be bringing a lot of cool stuff, especially with their D-Face collab. Mm -hmm. So if you're a big fan of uh, D-Face, then I would highly recommend you oh, come. Yeah. And um, along with, uh, with D-Face, they've actually teamed up with Metacom to create some exclusive extra large um, products. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they might even bring something from Soriyama's mm -hmm. collection as well that they did. Uh, Angelus, mm -hmm. Angelus brand. They're mm -hmm. another uh, sponsor that jumped on uh, last year with us. They produce uh, paint for uh, like leather goods. Yeah. So you can actually use their paint on couches and shoes. And mm -hmm. they do amazing demonstrations where they bring in artists using the Angelus paint brand. And you're able to see like all this cool stuff. Because a lot of people like, oh, well, if I want to customize my white, adidas i'll just use sharpies and yeah. things like that but what you don't understand is like all that fades all yeah. of it cracks yep this Wears paint yeah. yeah this paint is especially made yeah for that so if you haven't done so already you should definitely go check them out right on then just some of the other guys that we should mention 3d retro 
Shout out. You know, there's there's a lot of money. <laughs> Imagine from 3D, that. <laughs> a lot of money from 3D Retro that's coming into the show. So yes. there's that. I also got one of my other companies involved, mm. USAE Pay this year. Oh, yes, good. Yeah, talk about that a little bit because I know the transactional e-commerce portion yeah. of the event is it's a it's a big deal for the vendors, right? Yeah. Because that's gotta work well for them. So USAE Pay is another company that I own. I've actually own this company with my brother started it back in 98 mm-hmm. so this is much older than designer con uh it's a payment gateway mm-hmm. in our industry and we've been around much longer than like the squares and the stripes of the I, world i've never heard of those guys I yeah they're that. just awful especially with their new transaction fees <laughs> but basically we we at usc pay we develop brand new ways of processing credit cards for for all kinds of industries. So yeah, we're tied into shopping carts. We're tied into mobile payments and things like that. And the reason why you may not have heard of the name is we white label a lot of things. Yeah. So you you might be using the USA Pay product and you don't even know it. Yeah, right. But basically the reason why USA Pay is sponsoring the show is because there is a lot of electronic transactions happening at the show, especially in today's age where it's like we're becoming more and more of a cashless society yep. so there's there's all kinds of things that usa pay is doing to help vendors mm-hmm. and actually help designer con the entire ticketing system the entire system for checking in the entire checkout process at multiple booths they're all using usa pay so we're a proud sponsor of designer right, con. good and then uh, last but not least uh enamel market They're sponsoring Mm -hmm. the show. Mm -hmm. Uh, They are actually providing uh, a lot of the pins that our VIPs and our vendors. Mm -hmm. Yes, there is a vendor exclusive pin that you get. Ah, You probably know. I look forward to that. But uh, they are the ones providing the pins. But more importantly, what they've done is they've actually curated an entire section of the floor. And we understand that a lot of these guys can't afford a 10 by 10 booth. And uh, Enamel Market has come in and they've subsidized a lot of the cost. And what they're doing is you don't get a 10 by 10 booth, Mm. but you get a six foot table. And for a lot of these pin vendors, that's all they really need. need, And you're going to have about 40 of the coolest pin vendors out there selling their stuff. And last year we did it for the first time. Mm -hmm. And I got to tell you, that area was packed. It was packed with people and people love these pins. So we're excited to have them back this year. And um they're they're a great sponsor and because they're they're basically doing what you know they're they're the same mindset that we are which is basically we're going to cover a lot of the costs so we can get these companies involved in the scene then we'll try to figure out how to make the money later <laughs> so <laughs> that's right so they're well, really cool and on that's, that. that to me that's sort of business 101 right i mean make the product sing make the product killer right the money will come right right exactly and uh that's what you're doing. Yeah. So those are those are our prime sponsors. Thank you for letting me take the time uh, to absolutely, man. show them off. I'm sure they appreciate it as well. You know, one other thing which we didn't mention hmm. was there is a art show happening this year. Okay. At um at the show and it's called Hamilton. Tell me more. Okay, I will. <laughs> uh so there's this there's this actor who starred in this like little sci-fi movie. Mm. You may have heard of it. It's mm. called Star Wars. I think, yeah, Star Wars. Star Wars. Yeah, I Star think Wars. I have. Yeah. I think I have heard Small of that film. somewhere. Yeah, I think it came out like in the seventies. I think it might be on YouTube or something. I don't. Yeah, know. yeah. I don't yeah. know. Nobody yeah. really cares. But anyway, after <laughs> after he did that, he uh, this this uh, actor Mark Hamill. Mark uh, Hamill. Mark Hamill. Mark Look Hamill. him up. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. He kind of familiar. has had this illustrious voiceover career. And so lot, I've heard his voice. That's how I know him. There you I've go. Been, uh, okay. Like he he's done the Joker in right. a, a lot of the Batman okay. animated series. I mean, if you look at his voiceover history, he's done so many characters that it's incredible. I, I love it. That's so great. we are celebrating uh, Mr. Hamill, and uh, we are doing a tribute art show called Hamill Tune, where uh, we've gotten uh, a lot of amazing artists to participate in the show. By the way, Ben, this is big news. This is really fucking cool what you're talking about. It is. It's very cool. Yes. <laughs> Which is why we're talking about it. But um you know, uh yeah, so 
So we, just to be clear, so you've got artists that are going to be uh, creating these characters that this, I don't know, kind of kind of known, maybe not so known actor named Mark Hamill. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who did the voiceover. I, I never heard of him, yeah, but whatever. To, to, nice. to sure. honor his work as a voiceover <laughs> actor, they're going to be creating all these characters yeah. and it's going to be part of an exhibition. Yes, it's going to be this big art show. Last year, we did an art show to celebrate the 25th anniversary of Jurassic Park. Yes. And we had amazing artists involved and we brought in a 36 foot T-Rex. I remember. Uh, thank you to Universal universal for providing us that mm. but you know it's now 26 years so right. whatever so this year <laughs> wait till 30 we, there you go actually next year oh man it's gonna be amazing Ooh. yeah we'll talk about that but More to come. <laughs> exactly uh but this year we're we're doing this big thing with uh mr hamill and um he has been so graciously very supportive yeah. of the show he's given us his Thumbs up and A-OK and, Super cool. you know, he'll probably come by and take a look at the show. And it's cool because, like, and I'm I'm being very honest here, like, I, I knew he did voiceover work. I mean, I grew, I, as a kid, I watched the Batman animated series yeah. back in the 90s. And I, sure. I, like, I had no idea he was the voice of the Joker. Right. And it's, like, so cool. Mm -hmm. uh, but he has done... Yeah, because so I mean, much. I, I, I personally, like, I wondered, like, where is where is Luke Skywalker? What is he doing? He's with he's his, doing like, and he's doing all this voiceover yeah, stuff. Tons, yeah, tons of voiceover work, and all these artists are just going to come and celebrate him, and mm. it's going to be so cool. It's going to be so awesome, That's and um, and then at the same time, we do have some exclusive Funko Pop coming mm -hmm. out sure. that's not luke skywalker figures or anything like that they're just mark hamill mm -hmm. funko pop that mm -hmm. you'll be able to get mm -hmm. uh in conjunction with the celebration so very good it's gonna be awesome man. that's yeah, what I, i'm pumped man i can't wait like <laughs> this is gonna be like the longest month of waiting oh it's gonna be awesome yeah. it's gonna be so cool you're not sleeping for the next six no, weeks but <laughs> i haven't i haven't slept for like the past three months that's right i i don't even know what i'm saying anymore so there you go <laughs> <laughs> well you've been incredibly articulate today my thank friend. you i appreciate the coffee hooked into my veins <laughs> So that really helps. I'm glad you have that here. Well, I, uh, I, I'm I so grateful, Ben, for you to take time out of your crazy busy schedule to come and sit down. And, oh, no, and, the pleasure was all ours. And we, tell the story. We love talking to you guys. Uh, we love Crew West and we love you, Scott. You Thank know, you. You, you are mutual. always part of the family. Oh, thanks, you can, man. You can never leave. I can never. Every time I leave, they pull me <laughs> pull back you in. Back in. <laughs> so, and you know, and I'm I'm happy to to say that Crew West is coming back yes. this year and yes. you guys, I mean, what are you guys going to be do, ah, can we talk about that the a script? Bit? Well, yes. Yeah. So uh, last year, uh, we had great success, uh, as many vendors do. Most I love do. the fact that you had, um, you know, the whole live painting going on in there. Thank you. And it was awesome. Thank it was you. very cool. So, yeah, so as you may recall, um, what we did last year was we sort of divided the booth in half. Uh, my business partner, artist man one, uh, had, awesome his, guy. had half the, 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 the booth and yep. was painting live and selling artwork, what have you. And, yeah. and he did fantastic. Well, of course he's coming back and is going to be doing much of the same with awesome. new artwork, so on and so forth. Our friends, uh, from sugar press, uh, uh you know, they do art prints yeah. and work with great artists. They're coming. They're going to be in our booth as well. Nice. Selling prints. Very cool. Our dear friend, Jorge. Hey, Gutierrez is going to be dropping a print and doing signing in our Sweet. booth, which would be great. So we're super excited about that. Uh, and then, as you might recall, on the other side of the booth last year, we had this sort of live interactive gallery. I called it the Not Real Art Gallery. Yeah. yeah. And we had uh, kids and people contributing their artwork, you know, on site to the gallery. So, yeah. so I mean, it was packed with people taking our Sharpies doodling drawing creating these fun little love artworks it. and posting it. it up on this big wall yeah and i kid you not over three days uh we had i think we had over 500 pieces of original artwork created on these you know uh, four by six cards that's right? awesome that we, so it was so fun so we're gonna do that again and I, be I bet you if you look through all of those yeah you'll find a majority are just like the basic fans right but in there you'll find a rim probably, rant. <laughs> yeah, like like one of the biggest street artists probably came around and said, this is awesome. I'm going to do something. Absolutely Just right. stuck it on the wall. 
And there it is. Absolutely right. And and in fact, what we're doing with those artworks is that we're going to be printing zines oh, um, and great. handing them out. Um, and, you know, we'll like you, uh, you know, we're, we're very mindful of the fact that, you know, we're not going to be, you know, you know, making money on the backs of artists or whatever. But what I would like to do is figure out a strategy whereby. It, if we generate some revenue from this stuff, that it can go back into a scholarship or a grant oh, that yeah. would help fund arts education for underprivileged kids or so on and so forth. So that would be amazing. trying to create a, a virtuous cycle of things. But um, but yeah, so we're going to be doing the interactive thing again, and uh, we're super stoked. And I'm going to be doing um, sort of bring in a, a camera crew, video crew, and do um, sort of man on the street interviews with artists across the the show floor. Awesome, um, because we you know want to capture that energy. And if I get really lucky to pull it together, I'd like to do some live streaming from the venue. Sure, yeah, and um, and make sure that you know the world is is uh, being aware. To, yeah, <laughs> that's right, that's right. So, um, so yeah, man, we're pumped, and you got a lot of stuff going on. It's exciting, it's exciting, and um, I also want to take the opportunity to thank you huh? for, uh, I, I guess, uh, agreeing to uh, accepting my invitation to speak at our conference. Yeah in March and March 21st. Uh, and uh, you're going to be a speaker at the Not Real Art Conference for Creators. Yeah, I, I hope I don't screw it up for you. I'm, <laughs> I, I apologize ahead of time. It, I tell you, the risk is high for us, man. I mean, you know, like, uh, it's like, God, somebody oh, said, are you man. really sure you want to invite Ben? He, he might really ruin the whole show. I'm like, you know what? I love Ben. I'm taking a chance I mean, March, I still might be catching up on sleep by then. <laughs> Actually, I, uh, it'll start a new cycle because usually we, we open up registration in February. So I'll still be like uh, shaky yes, up yes. there, but I'll try my best. I promise. We'll 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 put ice packs, uh, Advil, uh, uh, Red Bulls, whatever you need. Just Perfect. To keep it going. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's a lot. A lot is happening. It's super exciting. Um, I also want to take this time. I know how busy you are. I want to invite you. So um, Saturday night, if you happen to be uh, available. We are hosting the Not Real Art exhibition at Art Share LA. Yeah, I saw that. Saturday night from six to nine. We're yep. going to be featuring the work of our grant winners wow. because last year, uh, well, this year, 2019, at the conference in March, we announced the winners of our grant. And so we have Not Real Art has a $12,000 grant. We award $1,000 to 12 artists. That's great. Uh, to help their practice, empower their careers. And so... We're going to be uh, uh, curating an exhibition Saturday uh, featuring their work. So I, I saw it. I'm going to try to make it. Um, Thank you. And uh, you're you're in the same boat as I am. You know, I've got you've got the what seven year old and seven year old daughter and a two and a half year old son. Yep. Yeah. And I've got the one year old yes. and a four year old. <laughs> yeah. So that's tougher. You're in a tougher situation. A little bit tougher, but um, <laughs> let's see how Saturday goes, and hopefully. I will see you. Just there. promise me that at the very least, worst case scenario, you'll be there in spirit. Absolutely. Okay. That's guaranteed. That's a, <laughs> good. That's, that's that knowing that is all I need. Because I'm dead inside. So that's <laughs> that's the best way. <laughs> no, no, but I mean you're, part of what you're getting at is, and that's the irony, right? Is that as much as we love art and culture and as much as we want to celebrate art and culture, as many events that happens in this oh, crazy yeah. town every weekend, like we, we you can't get to a, a 16th of them. I mean, it's yeah. just, you, we scratch the surface, you know. I was, I you know, before kids, I was barely able to get to every yeah, event. Right. And I mean, I thought I covered a lot. Like, yeah. uh, there would literally be Saturdays where it's literally, we would call it the art crawl, where right. we would jump from Culver City to downtown to, you know, somewhere in Hollywood. And it would just be like art show after art show after art show after art show. Yeah. And now, you know, unfortunately, it's like, Okay, let's see if we can hit up two. Right. And, uh, you know, we have to pick and choose. And and then it's like, well, the art show, the great thing is these shows are still up. Yep. You know, even after the openings. Right. And we, we, you know, we tend to go afterwards now. But, yeah, it's, it, it gets harder. So here's the bigger question. How has being a dad and having two kids, two mouths <laughs> to feed, cut into your uh, art habit uh, in terms of collecting art? Are you able to spend the same amount of money collecting art as you as you I, did? Let me let me preface this by saying <laughs> I love my wife so so much. Of course you do. Of course that goes without and saying. Thank God she's around and 
I yeah, um, but <laughs> you know she's very understanding of my disease. Yes, I mean yes, habit. Yes, and yes. Um, it, well, it, it it is yeah, it's a sickness. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, but to say to say that I've slowed down, no. I can't say that oh I have. Oh my god, you're amazing! I'm, uh, so, I'm so inspired by that answer. But I, I feel bad for my walls because, like, if you you've been to my office, yes, and you haven't been to my office like in a while. No, yeah, it's been a while. So yeah. I think every time you step into my office, you'll probably you've noticed mm. that there's always something added. Yeah, always, always something new. Yeah, and uh, I I don't know how much more I can. Well, by the way, this this is actually the best news. I was really uh, going to be sad and and a little depressed if I had heard that uh, that you know your your love and your passion was somehow uh, oh, mitigated no. by never the, uh, responsibilities of parenthood. Yeah, I yeah. I mean I've been told like you gotta you why slow down, right. but I'm like I can't. I've been told I've been told you know sourdough your kids need shoes. I'm like no they don't. Yeah, no, they they're don't. fine. You know, you know how many kids they're in this fine. world don't have shoes? Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> let let my, me free. <laughs> my kids have an. Am- they're going to inherit a, an amazing art collection. Exactly. <laughs> awesome. It's good. it's going to be so cool. They're going to love these vinyl figures. That's it's right. So yeah. good. But yeah, luckily my wife is awesome and understanding. And shout out to the wives. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. We are lucky so, men. but yeah, it'll it'll never stop. Ben Goretzky, you're the best, my friend. No, Thanks for you coming. Are. You're no, the no, best. You, no, no, you, you're, no, no, you, 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 you. No, <laughs> you know who's the best? The people listening right now to yes. this. Well, they are. They you are. You guys best. are the best. So give yourself a round of applause. Pat yourself on the back. There you go. Go treat yourself to some nice. To a cookie or something. <laughs> I don't know. You deserve it. So. And we'll see you in Anaheim. Yes, November please. 22nd, 23rd, yeah. 24th. Get your tickets at designercon.com. Yes. Get them while they're hot. Yep. VIP tickets are selling out as we speak. They are. And uh, thank you. Thank you so much for having us. And Anytime. If you see us on the floor, just come say hi. I will. And make me a promise. We come back to the Not Real Art podcast and, yeah. and talk more. And by the way, uh, anytime that you have something you want to talk about or share or sure. whatever. Come well, on we've, we've told you everything that we can. So some pretty good stuff today. We've drained you dry today. Just for today. <laughs> there you go. Always something new. All right, my friend. Be well. You too. Thank you. Hey there. Thanks for tuning in. Please be sure to like this episode and share it with your friends on social. And if you haven't already done so, please be sure to press subscribe and follow us on IG at Not Real Art Official. We appreciate the support. Sourdough, out. <laughs>